Mega rich pastors like Joel Austin, Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, Joyce Mayer and Creflo Dollar have often been in the spotlight due to their extravagant lifestyle and significant wealth. The message from the beginning to the end is a blessing plan. I'm asking you today to give. I really am. I'm asking you to give for his sake, for his sake, and expect a harvest. Really expect a harvest. And I'm going to ask you to give an amount to the Lord. I'm going to challenge you to give a hundred dollars. Benny Hinn has faced criticism for living lavishly, including owning expensive properties and a private jet. Joel Austin, the pastor of Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas, is known for his multi-million dollar mansion and extravagant lifestyle. Austin and his wife Victoria purchased an expensive home in 2010 for $10.5 million. Located in the suburbs of Houston, the mansion has 17,000 square feet of living space and is now estimated to be worth $15 million. I love that scripture. It says, when you help those in need, you are lending to the Lord and He will repay you. That's what you do each week or every time you give, you are lending to God and I know you've seen in your own life, God knows how to repay you. Do you send money to any of these prosperity fellas? If you do, stop right now. Don't you write another check? That's right. That's right. Don't you write another check? Oh, Don't you right. let these televised liars put you on a guilt trip. See, God is my business partner. And my giving to him is his cut. And if I rip off his cut, why should he bless me? I start giving on that level so that God would owe me. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying? You can't handle that. I started giving on the level where I put God in debt. And God said, I'll owe no man. I start giving on the money that I wanted to make. I start giving on a deal that hadn't closed yet. And that God had to open up the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing because he wasn't going to be in debt to me. That's a lie. That's a lie. Oh, yeah. That's a lie. That's a lie. T.D. Jakes lives in a $5.5 million mansion in Fort Worth, Texas. Joyce Mayer, a popular author and speaker, also lives a lavish lifestyle with multiple luxurious homes and personal expenses paid by her ministry. When I talked with Dr. Roberts today and we talked about this seed faith thing, he said something awesome. He said the Bible says giving and receiving, but he said God has taught me by studying that word receiving that another way to say that word is receiving. The word receiving means receiving. And so he said when you give, you get a receipt in heaven that when you have a need, you can then go with your receipt and say, you see, God, I have got my receipt from my sowing, and now I have a need, and I'm cashing in my receipt. You are following these preachers who make you think all your blessings hang on dollars and cents. And now is the time to call for the return on your tithing and on your giving and your sowing over the years. Hallelujah. Call for it. You have a right to it. It's laid up in your heavenly account and it belongs to you. Kenneth Copeland, a televangelist and founder of Kenneth Copeland Ministries, owns a private jet and luxurious properties. He is believed to be the wealthiest preacher in the United States and lives in this tax-free parsonage near Fort Worth, appraised at $7 million. Creflo Dollar, a so-called pastor and televangelist, has also faced scrutiny for his opulent lifestyle and expensive possessions. These pastors also preach the prosperity gospel, a controversial belief that God rewards faith and positive confession with financial prosperity and material wealth. I want to believe God for a 65 million dollar plane. You cannot stop me. I think it's, you need to sow a seed right now. God wants to bless you and the way you step through that door is the sowing of seed. You determine the size of your harvest when you sow your seed. Do you need a big harvest? Then you sow lots of seed. He get on television and <laughs> tell you the Lord said to him that if you send him $50, sow seed. Yes. Sow seed. Oh yeah. Sow seed. Harvest responds only to seed, not to prayer. Harvest responds only to seed, not to prayer, not to fasting, 
or any kind of position you have. Find you some piece of money. Find you something to sow. If, if it's money, you, you need whatever the harvest is you need to come up. If it's money, you're going to have to sow money. You can't talk about, I, I'm going to sow my time. You're just going to get a vacation. No money. Until the seed is sown, the harvest is not in view. You can go to Home Depot or Lowe's. <laughs> and to the nursery section. Get a pack of seeds, the pumpkins, or the sunflowers, and send that to the preacher, the false prophet. Why don't you make a financial vow to the Lord right now while I'm talking to you, if you're facing a problem, and watch what God will do with you. They'll, they'll see a miracle happen quickly, supernaturally. Make the vow now, and then obey the Lord and sow that seed and watch what God will do with you. Lord, I thank you for the miracle coming to each one of them. It will begin this weekend. It will happen this week. In Jesus' mighty name for your glory, as you've done for me, do it for your people. Amen. I want you to go to the phone, dial the number on the screen, and simply say, I'm one of the 1,000. I'm going to faith in somehow in 90 days a thousand dollar seed you may already have the thousand it may be something you put aside for retirement or a college or a vacation you may have put some money aside that nobody knows about and god's giving you a picture it may be in the bottom of your closet maybe in a sock maybe between your mattresses it may be an account that nobody knows about but you and god that's not your harvest that thousand dollars won't get you anywhere until God touches it. The blessing is in what you got left. And if you will sow what you got left, God said, I'll give you back whatever it was. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. God have never sent no preacher in the history of the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation that sin went out and just preach to people how to get money, how to get, money. How to get rich, That's right. how to get wealthy. The only wealth that God sent a man to preach is his word. That's right. These pastors have amassed considerable fortunes through various means, including collecting money from their followers through donations, tithes, and offerings. They typically run large ministries, televangelism programs, and sell books, CDs, and other merchandise, all contributing to their income. Additionally, some of them have faced controversies relating to financial mismanagement and accusations of misuse of funds. All prosperity preachers are false prophets and liars. And liars. Kenneth Copeland saying, being poor is of the devil and it's a sin. Mm. Now, viewers, if you have a preacher that talk like that and that's teaching you that, he's a liar. You need help feeding your babies, God bless your darling heart, then you ought to be helped. But I'm going to tell you something, you need to be tithing off that help. Yeah. That's your increase. You need to be tithing that. Well, dear Lord, Brother Copeland, I'm in poverty now. I know it. I'm telling you how to get out. Amen. That's the gospel. Amen. I don't care if you ain't got but two nickels. Give him the first one. For the poor you have with you always. Did you hear what Jesus said? For you will always, always have poor people. That's right. Why don't the prosperity liars teach this? Teach that. You say do it cheerfully because... And the Bible does give and shall be given unto you free and giving. He's a major part of the whole Christian. But do you believe there's so many injuries to be in this tree? That more will come back to them? Yes. I think that's what they mean by prosperity thoughts. You think Jesus Christ would roll around in a Rolls Royce? Uh, I think he would have. I really believe that if Jesus was physically on the earth today, he wouldn't be riding a donkey. If God is speaking to you to sow $1,000 seeds tonight, I'm asking for those amounts because I want to see your faith released tonight. When you sow larger amounts, you release faith. And when faith is released, God Almighty will release the harp. This teaching has drawn criticism from theologians and other Christian leaders who argue that it manipulates vulnerable followers into giving money with promises of blessings. Men like my uncle, they are devouring people. It's utter deception. There's no place for it in the church. 
No pastor should ever do that. There is no model for, hey, give all your money to, to my thing. That's a scam. But when your wealth is gained off of preying upon the hopes and fears of hurting and sick and desperate people, there's a lot wrong with that. Pray on the sick and to pray on the poor and become wealthy by lying to them. Is there anything more wretched than that? And then attributing it to the Holy Spirit. Your blessing is not determined by the amount of what you give. What you give. God needs you saved. He needs you full of the Holy Ghost. He needs you well, and he needs you strong, and he needs you rich. While some of these pastors claim that their wealth is a result of God's blessings, others view their extravagant lifestyle as contradictory to the principle of modesty and humility often associated with spiritual leaders. Many of these so-called pastors lead mega churches and ministries with massive congregation which contributes significantly to their financial success. These churches often hold large gatherings and conferences attracting thousands of people who donate money and purchase merchandise. In the United States, religious institutions including churches and ministries enjoy tax exempt status which means that they are not required to pay taxes on their income. This status has been a point of contention as critics argue that it enables some pastors to accumulate personal wealth while the ministry's funds are tax sheltered. Over the years, some of these pastors have faced legal challenges and public scrutiny over financial practices. Investigations into misuse of funds, extravagant spending and lack of transparency have led to controversies and damaged their reputations. The lavish lifestyles of these pastors, including luxury homes, private jets and expensive cars have drawn criticisms from both the public and fellow religious leaders. Many argue that such opponents is inconsistent with the teachings of humility and simplicity found in the scriptures. While some of the money collected from followers may indeed go towards supporting the ministries, concerns arise when a significant portion is used for personal enrichment such as acquiring extravagant possessions or funding extravagant vacations. All these mega false prophets you watching, these prosperity preachers viewers, all of them are false prophets and deceivers and tricksters and on their way to hell. The financial burden placed on followers who give generously to these ministries, often in hope of receiving blessings or healing, is a concerning aspect. Critics argue that this giving can lead to financial strain for vulnerable individuals who are promised prosperity in return. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I do pray that we all continue in striving to please God. Please remember to like subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when new videos are uploaded. Thanks for watching.